We're going into legend mode again for level two, Elden Caves. It's a lava level. <laughs> Bad legend news. Mode. There legend are mode. yeah. Legend mode is the story mode. Adventure mode. Wow. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you, and it's it's actually pretty cool. It's okay. Like, I, wait, all right. Yep. You said le you said legend mode. I thought that meant that was like the extra hard after mode or something. No, that, that's just like the story Link mode. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. After a long, after an arduous Beast battle, Link and his comrades slew, slew King. Did never mind. The army of monsters had taken Hyrule Castle. In that situation, I said earlier. Oh, suffer the dust had settled. Princess Zelda was <laughs> no. nowhere to be found. No, no. I don't know what that was. You merely adopted the Triforce. I was born with it. <laughs> no, no. This is professional. No, it's not. But I like to pretend it is. All right. Battle had been lost. Impa's foreskin had did something. Green tunic. Green tunic. Green tunic. You can't do the fucking Bane voice, man. It, it sounds like a creepy grandpa, but that's sort of what he sounded like. Hey, hey. Anyway, weeks passed. Right. You know what? I'm not. I'm not even. I'm just gonna let you sit on that one. Fine. I just want to say again how weird it is that this is like the only voiced part of the game. This like exposition, non cutscene between levels. And the actual cutscenes with people talking, that's just dialogue text. There's no talking, oh, yeah, it's just yeah, this lady. Yeah, it's, it's a little strange. It's, it's... Like, like, I th like I said in the last episode, I, s I can sort of understand why they wouldn't have um, dialogue. I've actually, like, voiced dialogue the in-game stuff. Yep. But you'd think for consistency's sake, they'd do it all one way or the other. You'd think, but no. Anyway, this level, well, I'm playing as Sheik. Or no, as, uh, sorry, as Impa who is uh, a member of the Sheikah tribe. Oh, so she wears a turban? No. Oh. It's just... <laughs> she is a giant-ass blade and has water elemental sort of attacks. And this oh, level we're, we're this level is called Elden... Of weapons. Yep. This level is called Elden Caves. And I believe, I'll have to check, but I'm pretty sure this is an interesting bit of trivia. Named after Murphy Brown's house painter. Bullshit. Yes, it is bullshit. Oh, just, I just yeah. fucking made that up. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I did not even. I was not even confident you would get a Murphy Brown reference in 2014. Okay, I got a Murphy Brown <laughs> reference because I fucking like my because my parents like that show, so I watched it when I was a kid. But like, <laughs> dude, I think that shit got canceled before like everybody that is gonna give a shit about this got was born. Was born, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm more impressed with the fact that you even thought of Murphy Brown in 2014. Okay. That's genuinely <laughs> impressive. But anyway, lots of skeletons in this level. Lots of skelly, little skelly mans. Yep. Oh, rupees! You must be getting them, rupees. And Impa is, she feels different because she doesn't have that huge, like, wild psycho swing. But, um, like, she's very good at, like, direct, hard, quick hits. Okay. Like, not super quick, she still is mostly a hard hitter. But right. she doesn't have any big clearing things. She just has that little, like, area of effect water... Okay, it's, it's, so she's got like a heavy, it's a heavy attack. Yeah. Okay. And these are posed once again, just more. It, oh, pretty much all the enemies here are from like, Zelda games. Really? That's what they're called. Come on, that's a dumbass name. Anyway, Edgar Proxy. Allen. I'm pretty sure they're named after Edgar Allan Poe. Shut! Stop! Stop! You and your. Look, look, like I'm, not, I'm not, I am not letting you, all right, people listening, yeah, look, sorry, people watching, this motherfucker has a tendency to just throw random trivia at me, and sometimes it's true, Yeah. so what ends up happening is he'll throw me, like, three bullshit things, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's real funny, dude, and then he'll throw me one, like, hey, did you hear the guy from, the, the guy that played Jaws and uh, Bond died, and I'm like, yeah, fuck you, no, he didn't, did and he? then I find, then he found up, uh, he did, oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, oh, you didn't tell me that one? No, yeah, he died. Richard Keel died. Oh, man. Yeah. He was also in Ega. He also was in uh, Happy Gilmore. Yeah. And you can count on me waiting for you in the parking lot. It's literally the only thing this, I know. This is that. all 90s episode, isn't it? What, that, that's what we're doing, man. That's all we're doing. Okay. Look, look, we are, we, are, we are 90s children. And that's all there is to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this part of the level is actually kind of slow because it's basically just you know running around and just Sorry, waiting for the next up. keep to open up so just clear oh, okay. this then moving on and eventually there's going to be a semi crappy but not that bad escort mission but okay I, I, let, let me just let me just go on record by saying i don't inherently dislike escort missions 
I don't think they are, in the abstract, a bad idea. I think they can be done very well. I think a lot of games have done them very well. They can be, they just rarely are. Yeah, I mean... And here, it's, it's not bad, because... Uh, first off, the guys you're trying to protect have, like, a life meter. Like, they okay. actually have some health, and they can take a little bit of a beating, so you can kind of, you know, handle it. It's Right, so they're not insta-kills. Yeah. It's not but too I'm, much different from protecting a keep. Right. Yeah. And, on the, and, very... on, and on the flip side, although I appreciate it from a gameplay perspective, I have to say the way The Last of Us did it yeah. was just, it, it really, like, pulled me, it completely pulled me out of the experience. The, uh, did you play? Did you play? Did you, yeah, you, did, you played Last of Us, did you? Yeah. yeah. It didn't fucking matter what the girl was doing. Like it literally, she could be on the, she could just wander through the middle of a, of a battle zone, mm -hmm. and they just ignored her. You know, yeah, it is. A, it's a tough damn balance. I'm kind of curious to see how this how this game handles it. Yeah. Well, it's it's very direct, and by very direct, I mean the stuff you have to protect is like <laughs> this, is, this is absurd. Like, I know. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> Like in the lower in the lower right corner, you see how many people you've killed so far, and like this. Is uh, that what that is? Wait, yeah, wait, wait, six wait. five minutes into the uh, level, I've almost killed five hundred uh, enemies. Hold on. In fairness, this is the Nintendo strategy of they, you're you're not killing them, you're knocking them out. They're just being KO'd. That's all. Relax. Uh, not even wrong. <laughs> this Pokemon are sleeping. <laughs> when will they wake up? Oh, Except for that Cubone who's wearing the skull of his dead mother. God, the first time I found that out. That's what? creepiest. Not it. Not the creepiest Pokemon, though. I know it's not, but that yeah. one just bummed. It, it wasn't that it was creepy. It was that it bummed me out for like three days. Yeah. But not as creepy or bums me out as Paris and Parasect. Okay, the, that's true. The crab with the mushroom on his back, and when it evolves, the mushroom literally eats the crab's brain and takes it over. <laughs> because you know, it's based on a real fungus, like, symbiotic relationship. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Parasitic relationship. Yeah, I guess it would be a parasitic relationship. I'll tell That's you what, horrifying. The, fun the funny thing is, too, on the uh, the actual show, for some reason, my one, my, uh, a, a mutual friend, uh, a friend of mine from school that uh, will <laughs> a few times, is, is, uh, his name's Grant. He always watched, for some reason, he always watched Pokemon before football games. I don't know why, but he did. Jigglypuff's intro always creeped the balls off of me. The singing? Yeah, because it was always, like, just singing with no background music. And it was all that weird, like, ethereal, breathy, kind of high-pitched voice. And it just creeped me the fuck out. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. And now I really want to make you read some, like, Pokemon creepypasta, like, the, like Lavender Town. And then, uh, uh, and, then I, I, and then replace your ringtone with the Jigglypuff song. <laughs> <laughs> Look, my, my 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 ringtone right now is the Music Box Toyodor song from Five Nights at Freddy's. It is not changing anytime soon. Awesome. Okay, just big ass bomb shoe. Yeah, that's what I'm exporting. So basically, it's oh, it's, oh yeah. shit, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so see, I like that. So that's not like yeah. it's not like some fragile little girl thing. No, and there are these like pillars that you need to sort of escort the bomb shoe to get to, so it just destroys them and opens up the uh, the path. And it actually shows you on the map just a straight line. It's basically going in that direction. Just keep the path clear and don't like get hurt too much. Oh, up in, oh yeah, up in the upper in the upper right, it's those dots. Yeah. Well, not dots. They're like arrows. Little, little, yeah, little arrows. Oh, it, so it actually maps the whole thing out for you. Yeah, like not, not not the literal path, but it goes like okay, it's heading in this direction. Yeah, it's going it's going yeah. that way. That see, that's cool, man. That's well, obviously that's not the literal path because you see it actually cuts yeah. through the dead zone there. But yeah, that's cool. See, that's how you do an escort mission. Yeah, I mean, it's... All, it, you don't ask for a lot. You give you give the player a chance by have, get, giving the thing a health bar. You know, you don't There's do that agency. Whole... There is risk. Yeah, there's obvious risk, but it's not that BS where if you just happen to be, for whatever reason, you just miss for a blip second, you gotta start the whole thing over again. Yeah, but like even... That's cool. Of, I left the bomb shoe over there because I cleared out most of the enemies around it, and I ran over to take over that outpost so enemies would stop spawning and I'd get some more backup. So it's like very, very sort of shallow, mild strategy, but it makes you feel like you have some agency. Right, but it is strategy too. It's not yeah. just... Yeah, like, okay, because when we started this, I mean, you know, you go back and you can check out my comments there. I was concerned that it was just a very stock standard 3D beat em up. Yes. And that's not, and that's clearly not the case. And I'm really not impressed. Not entirely, no. No, no, I, I don't think at all. I mean, like I said before, it's obviously not Final Fantasy Tactics, but no. there is plenty going on here that this is actually very cool. Oh, yeah. 
and when you get like a bunch of different characters and like you can choose different weapons and like there's there's just enough depth to make it feel satisfying and not that repetitive yeah which is really i mean in a beat em up and things like that you know when it's not arcade games like this guy. yeah not all on the channel game. we just played arcade games yeah. <laughs> i don't mean like here i just mean like yeah. in general you know, like, yeah, you know, we head to the barcade and play X-Men or whatever, and that's one thing. It's fine that that's totally repetitive, because you're just, whatever, you're in an arcade. Yeah. But I think really all a, a like, uh, single ownership uh, beat-em-up type game needs is just enough that you can't fall asleep while playing. Yeah. You know, it doesn't need to be exceptionally in-depth, because really that can be almost stifling in a game like this. You can't, well, that's sort of the difference between, like, a beat em up and a character action game like Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, where you need to like really get timing and cosmos and patterns down because I, that's that's the challenge of it. And, and I and, and I know people love that and they get, they get into it. That stuff bugged me so much, man. It really did. I I love some of them. I love the idea of some of them, and I will admit watching people play them is really cool. Like I was like the Devil May Cry, juggle them in the air with the bullets thing. But it just. It was a little too, you know, I, I don't need that many moving parts for a game like this. I can see it. I, I really like having complexity, but it, the, the complexity can get really, like, opaque and, like, impenetrable for me. Thank but, you. Yeah. By the way, thank you for using the word opaque, because I've used that in conversation before, and I've had people argue with me on whether or not that's even a valid word in conversation. <laughs> that's the opposite of transparent. Like, it's, that's, Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, you can't see through it. Thank you. Moving along. Moving along, uh, Link, who I am not playing, is backed into a corner, but he's Link, he's fine, who gives a fuck? And... He's got his stupid elf hat. Yep, fighting back to back, and hey! It's Zelda! Does Zelda actually do shit in this game? Yeah, because that's Zelda. You're fight. Oh, fight! Oh! It's so Sheik! The princess isn't dead! Because she's the princess, that's fucking Zelda. The evil uh... is Ganon. Ugh. You know the plot of this if you played any uh, Legend of Zelda game besides uh, Majora's Mask or Wind Waker. I, I mean, um, or Link's Awakening. Spoiler, I haven't played any of those games except for the very first one. Well, you played Ocarina, you just didn't beat it. Yeah, I didn't get nearly far enough to actually absorb even, a, even an iota of plot. Well, Sheik is the same thing in Ocarina. Like, that's basically okay. what this is from. It's like, okay, Zelda seems to have disappeared or been abducted, and check it out, Rad Desert Ninja just appears and basically acts all, you know, tuxedo mask to Link's Sailor Moon, <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, we're not just, no, 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 we're not just skating by that reference and acting like it didn't happen. You don't get to drop a Sailor Moon <laughs> reference and not have to account for the fact that you just dropped a Sailor Moon reference. Hey, it's back. There's a new series. I... No. Yeah, it's on Hulu. No, I wasn't doubting that it was. <laughs> I just mean that... I just No, just no. That's not... No. Stop. Unless Lauren Faust is doing it, I don't care. That'd be cool, but... No. Or, there, or if there's actual tits, then maybe. Well, I can give you some similar, some similar theme stuff that would be under that category. Well, I'm sure you can. Yeah. That Tons. was I basically look, know all of it. Look, that was why every I'm an expert of the subject. That was why every male I love hentai. Sorry, what? Really? You realize this is we got like a show going here, right? Like, you, like this is gonna people's is gonna be seeing this. I, I know. I didn't say anything. All right, I thought I heard a thing. Never mind. No, you didn't. That was my mistake. My no, mistake. I was just talking about Sailor Moon. You good? Yeah. You sound like you had a cough there. You need a lozenge or something? Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> Another skull tula. <laughs> I was, I, and the funny thing is, like my 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 lack of experience in Zelda games. I I should repeat. I have played briefly a lot of Zelda games. And, and you beat the first one, which is respectable because that's not an easy. That's a, that's not an easy game. It, it actually took myself and my aforementioned friend Grant an entire an entire day, by which I mean we woke up, started playing, and then finished <laughs> it before we fell asleep. Because How that game is... 27? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the answer I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, we did, it like, we did it like a couple of years ago. You gotta remember, though, the game doesn't tell you where to go ever. Oh, no, it tells you almost nothing. So we just kept getting lost. 
You know, it's not like here where you have, like, you see that map in the corner, you know where you have to go, there's a legend to it, you know what all the landmarks are, it directs you, it even tells you what direction you're facing. The map was literally white squares that told you nothing. Exactly, but I will say this, having gone through them all, and even briefly, and sort of looked at them again, I've, come, I've really come to the conclusion that Majora's Mask is probably the best. I'm gonna have that, I will go on record and see. I can see, I can definitely see that. I, I think you can make the case that, like, several of them are the best. I think Ocarina, can, you can make that argument. Uh, Link to the Past, you can make that. You, you can even make the argument for Wind Waker, especially HD, where they sort of, at least partly, fixed the bullshit Triforce hunt. Yes, yes, yes. Because, but, yeah, because I, because I did get, I did get that whenever I bought my Wii U. But thematically, Majora's Mask. Exactly, is and you know, settling. Yeah, and you know me because you know I'm, my I have a degree in English writing. Yeah. So, b because of just the themes of Majora's Mask, even if as a game, it basically, I mean, as a game, it played basically like Ocarina of Time. Yeah, it, exact same engine, same concept. Yeah, everything was the same, but oh my god. I mean, it's one of those games that once you start it, dude, I just love, I, uh, I don't want to gush about one game while, we're, while I'm watching you play another, so we'll just, I'll leave that for another time. Well, interestingly about this, uh, the team, uh, there's wanted to do this originally wanted to make this more zelda like with like some puzzles and like more items and stuff yeah but i'm pretty sure shigeru miyamoto himself basically said no make this a dynasty warriors game with zelda stuff and like leave the extra zelda stuff do it very lightly and i think it works very well because otherwise this would be trying to do way too much <laughs> i like how i still use the you know you know pisses me off the uh, European version of this has a collector's edition yeah. that has a uh, like Link's long stupid scarf uh, because he's a scarf in this game. I don't know why. Uh, a Triforce like alarm clock because it's both comfortable and stylish. I don't yes, know what you're, I don't and know what... a uh, and a actual like treasure chest. Really? Yeah. Damn. Like, and I'm pretty sure it's one that actually makes like noise when you open it. Oh, uh, so it's gonna be like. Um... But it's Europe only. Well, oh, that thing you reviewed. What thing? Oh, it was like the mini fridge. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that's not Europe only. That's distributed in the U.S. Well, I just also, mean it. it I also, just no mean, one knows what the hell I'm talking about. No, it's no, no, a okay. Tardis fridge from Think Geek. I looked at it in something else. It's cool. I wasn't sure if we. I, I didn't mean to like cross reference there. I wasn't sure if that was cool or not. Sorry, that was. That oh, was no. my. That was my mistake. No, it's nothing. It's just no one. I don't want to cross. What the hell we're talking it. about. My man here does. You guys know the, you guys know the loot crate thing that's yeah. offered out there. He reviews the items that comes out of that, and one of them was the Doctor Who TARDIS mini fridge. Well, no, that and wasn't it, actually from uh, Loot Crate. That was just from. Wasn't it? No. Oh, that was just Thinky. You're right. Yeah. And the point is, the point that I was getting at, the point, and I did have one, was did you? Maybe, I did actually. That it always made that noise when you opened it. Yeah. Well, there's a switch you can turn it off, but yeah. Yeah. So like, it was cool at first. Also, that I, noise is the TARDIS sound, not the. Legend of Zelda chest noise. Oh, no, shit. That's I'll a possible what, hack, though. That makes me want to try to do that. I, that would actually be kind of awesome. It'd be sort of like whenever you hacked your door to make the Star Trek sound when it opened. Well, again, that's not a hack. It's just another product from Think Geek. <laughs> it's a hack to me, man. I'm trying okay. to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to pump you up. Here. I'm trying to make you look cool for the kids. Incidentally, we are not sponsored by Think Geek. You can answer the code WeGameGood on ThinkGeek.com, and it will do absolutely nothing. <laughs> it'll actually, it'll actually make the price go up. Yeah. And it'll, <laughs> and it'll like, pack in a gift message that says "fuck you guys." Like, dude, do you know, don't, don't associate them with us. <laughs> but back to the game. Uh, this like, this poke kind of shows one of the ways that bigger enemies can sort of be interesting in how they attack, because he is a, like, purple flamethrower thing, and, okay, I just killed him. But he also has sort of that spread purple ball attack, and by doing that defensive roll, I can actually sort of avoid it, and I get some invincibility frames I can get through it. I'll tell you what, if there's one thing you really have to give Nintendo credit for, and this is true even in the games that frustrate my balls off, yep. they are amazing at, at varied enemies. Yeah, they are. You know... They do very well with enemies that attack differently, act differently, move differently, but not not like vastly, but just enough that it keeps making that you can't approach them all the exact same way. Yeah, and, and that's it, all you need in a game like this. Yeah, 
Like the, small, the smaller enemies here, like the, Drat. the the tiny skeletons and the Athos captains, they're basically the same whether they're like the red goblins or their skeletons or like whatever enemies might be around. I love but, the counter in the corner. I know. It's it's not even necessary. <laughs> it's way too big. Yeah. Like I could see them having a counter if like over the course of a map your kills were like seventy. You know, something that like feels tangible. But once you're killing. Like, look at that. It just went up by... It's what nuts. It? it just went up by, I think, 18 all at once. No, I'm sorry, uh, 23 all at once. But it feels, like, really fun and sort of stupidly satisfying to just blaze through these enemies because they, they're nothing. There is, like, little to no challenge with them. But as they get bigger, like that Lizalfos, that uh, lizard guy I just beat up... Yeah. Uh, that's actually a bit of a challenge. You cannot just hammer on it. You need to sort of avoid his flame attack and then hit him when he's weak. And, like, yeah. it's sort of like a lot of kind of... It's like eating popcorn in between, uh, punching someone. <laughs> I, 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 could, I could hear your analogy crackling in your head. Yeah, I... Like, you started I, off so well. I lost it as I was saying it. I, like, uh, let me, let me guess... But technically, you, it still you, is apt. You were trying... Let me guess. You were trying to marry the idea of, like, a popcorn snack versus, uh, something a little like a tiramisu or something. I guess. I'm not sure why he went straight to tiramisu. I don't know. I like tiramisu. Do you? I, do you? It's not good. Like? It just seems like a very specific, like not only dessert but food item. I was trying to cut. I was trying to come up with a good, with a good dessert. To, to I want to class the joint up. But also, like popcorn is kind of a. If anything, it is barely an appetizer. Like comes like free in the basket at, like the casual family dining restaurant, and you'd have True. like maybe a salad after that, then steak then maybe tiramisu and it probably wouldn't be that good because it's family dining not an Italian restaurant and it's not their specialty that got exceptionally specific <laughs> did it? <laughs> yes it did because I'm pretty sure <laughs> pretty sure that scenario applies to most times you eat out I was half expecting you to like start commenting on the wait staff and the cleanliness of the bathroom you yeah, just go into a full on like Daniel Tosh joke <laughs> but, but no yeah, like, yeah, another but yeah, bomb shoe but I get that because, yeah, the idea is that it sort of, it, it helps stitch the gaps between the larger, more difficult enemies. Yeah, and with a character action game, it would be more like each enemy is sort of something you have to kind of deal with. And to like a further extent with something like Dark Souls, where each encounter you have to deal with very, very deliberately. This is more sort of, you know, enjoy being a total badass until you find something that can potentially match you, and that's where the challenge comes from. Hell yeah! Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, check out this badass. Well, What's creepy the, what, badass. What is this? Watch it. <laughs> that eye? Oh! That's cool! Ah! That is cool! That was... Oh, that was mad as shit, dude! I know. It's like... It's like Orko's zombie twin. Oh, that was awesome! That was really cool! Yeah! And I, and I really want to agree with you said a second ago, because I think what you said is super important, and it do, and people sort of overlook that in gaming. Because I, it's not necessarily always good to just be constantly challenged. Yeah. Sometimes you aren't trying to accomplish, a like, like a, climb a mountain in your game. Sometimes you just really want that satisfaction of trudging through a game and just kicking the shit out of everything. Speaking of which, you see him fighting Wizro. He's like, yeah. a, he's like kind of a boss. That's why he's the bigger life bar. Right, and right, right. He's actually kind of challenging because his window of vulnerability is so small, and Impa is pretty slow compared to Link or compared to Sheik, who I can play later. Oh. That I need to like be very deliberate in getting him just in time to weaken him and really get those big hits. Otherwise, you just got to keep kind of like draining him down, like just wailing on him and gradually chipping his energy. Are you now? Are you selecting? Because I, I wasn't watching you whenever you were like starting. Yeah. Um, are you selecting your character, or does each chunk of the game have a character that you play for it? Uh, some chunks of the game have like specific characters you should play, or a small selection. Uh, but there are also different recommended, um, recommended elements. Like Impa okay. is water element, and in the Elven Caves, uh, water is better because it's a fire level. Right. Right. So like, yeah. And I will say, this game really, I mean, you, you, you mentioned it earlier, this game has a serious Devil May Cry feel, at least visually. It's in, the, in terms of the action, like how the action looks, not necessarily yeah. how it feels or how it's presented, but yeah, I don't mean, it works I don't really mean well. Actual, yeah, I don't mean an actual gameplay, but it's just that whole like sort of anime 3D, very large sword, colorful gems flying all over the place. Oh yeah. It just I, really, it gives that same feeling. 
and I'm actually super stoked with Bayonetta 2. Whoa! Whoa, what was that? Whoa! whoa. That's another whoa. super attack. Holy shit, friend. Yeah. Wait, your super attack is you just summon a raptor? Kind of. Okay, alright! Well, <laughs> there are different super attacks, and one of them... <laughs> in one of them, when I play the little, you know, Moe sorceress anime girl, I can summon, like, giant glowing blocks with my magic book and jump between them and then strike enemies with lightning. Oh. Yeah. Like you do, you know, that's a thing. I saw that in a book. In Japan, it happens all the time. I'm, I've, I've heard that. They don't I even... I they saw don't it. Even... I they saw it on Anthony Bourdain's No Reservations. It's true. They don't even travel by subway or anything. They travel by l lightning kick books. Whoa! Why did Man, he blow up? Cool. Uh, that's because the bomb shoe got where it had to go. Oh, but he, but he was my friend! It was meant to die. That was No! Disgusting. No, but we were escorting him! Yeah, escorting thought... him to die. No! At the, at the designated place and time so his death could have meaning. But anyway, yeah, this is the uh, end of this level, because this whole thing, I'm not sure if you noticed with the dialogue, is just, uh, you know, we got here, then dickbag wizard eyeball tooth dude was like, I'm going to seal this cave. It's, oh, crap, no, we got to get out. So that was where we were. I always thought that was a rather that. adult name for a Nintendo game, dickball mouth tooth dude. But Well, that was the original name for uh, Super Nintendo, for Super Mario Brothers 2. I've heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on to the next level then? Yep. Cool shit, all right. Victory! And the victory music is so plaintive, you can't hear it very well, but it's just a kind of like, it's almost kind of a minor key. Oh. But yeah, fading oh. out on this, we'll go, oh, check out this badass move. Because it was cool and she's a giant anime sword. Well, obviously, you got to have a giant anime. This is just irresponsible. What do you Shunk. <laughs> it's like, there is no reason for that. It's just to look badass. <laughs> How did she even jam the sheath into the ground? Never mind. I'm fine. I don't even. Yeah. Why, why am I questioning? Don't why am I asking? It. Yeah. But what you should do, watcher, is like, comment, subscribe, and keep watching other no. videos. Uh, Come on. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're yeah. Right. Whore it out. Whore it out as hard as you possibly can. That is my specialty. Love us. <laughs>